Hi, we're Laura and Dan. We've bought a beautiful rustic Portuguese barn and have literally zero knowledge of building and farming, but plan on converting it into a beautiful off-grid homestead. Follow us on our journey. Isn't it incredible how much life can change? One minute you can be working in the city, the next minute you can be building a homestead hundreds of miles away from where you've spent your entire life. Immersed in a new culture with new smells, landscapes and language. We have spent the last few months every day getting up early, working on projects to make this land a beautiful homestead. One of the reasons why we wanted to live this way of life is because we could see the way the world was progressing. Our culture and technology and modern conveniences speeding up our pace of life and leaving us with less time than ever and more unhappy than ever. This is why we decided to strip back our life and move closer to our origins and that was how our channel name was birthed. Today is Grape Harvest Day, something we've been really looking forward to. When we first bought this land, one of the first things that drew us to it was the amount of beautiful ancient grapevines there was all around. Some of them are over a hundred years old. So being here for our first harvest is something we're both really excited for. We're both well underprepared in terms of equipment and harvesting and preserving, but we're still going to give it our best shot and learn a lot in the process. We were overwhelmed by the amount of choice of harvesting equipment we weren't sure exactly what we needed. Some things this time around were out of our budget, maybe next year. We decided to pick up a funnel, some glass bottles and containers and a few crates and buckets to give it our best shot. Today is the day I was really looking forward to. It's our first grape harvest. Ever since we knew that there was grapevines on the land, we were so excited for our first grape harvest because it's just amazing to have your own grapes. From the UK, you don't really get that. And so we've just been picking off the, the red grapes that we've found so far. And everything that we've got here is just off the one vine, just this vine here, and we've still got more to pick from it. So I think we're gonna have a lot of grapes to collect especially just red ones, we've got far more green ones. But I think we're a little bit underprepared. We've just, we've only got the van at the moment and we don't have an oven or anything. So we're kind of limited to what we can do with the grapes. So I think we've got our work cut out for us and I think we're a little bit underprepared, but we'll see what we can do. We want to make the most of it anyway. and that the best grapes to pick are the ones that are actually closer to the ground and more shaded. We've lost a lot of them that have turned into like kind of raisins because they've just been too exposed to the sun. Some of them aren't, um, aren't as ripe as the others so we're just leaving them to ripen but we're just picking the ones that are the best and the sweetest. So all the grapes that we've gotten here is just off one grapevine. We didn't think that the harvest would be that good this year because there's been quite a severe drought and we've been going through quite a few heat waves here in Portugal but I'm just impressed how much abundance has just come from one vine and we've got probably about 50 vines on the property, maybe 60. One vine down, 70 to go. <sighs> we'll get there. doing is 
it's just a test of sweetness, we're just eating them along the way. Which I enjoy very much. <laughs> weight of this vine it's it's literally tore down one of the branches from the trees and it's entangled in and it's just completely dead so once we've harvested the grapes off these there's some really good bunches in there i think this tree is going to be so relieved when we're when we trim this vine down and tame it a bit and we save the tree from all the weight that's being pushed down on it because it's a really beautiful plum tree so would hate to see it be killed by the vine but it looks like this vine and this tree have been in a relationship for quite some time because the really old vine, it's got a really thick um, trunk, <laughs> what's it called? Trunk? You want to call it that? <laughs> it's, it's got a thick trunk. It's just got a thick trunk. <laughs> I don't even think of the way. It's like really thick and it's entangled in the in the tree, so they've obviously had a long-term relationship. Yeah. We think it's a bit toxic, so it needs to be like, this vine's starting to smother the tree now, so we need to cut it down. And it's got a, just as well, trust us when we see it, this, this grapevine's got a lot of junk in the trunk. It's got a lot of junk in the trunk, this one. <laughs> it's a big boy. <laughs> It's about midday now and it's getting very hot. We've decided to call it. Even though it's a lot cooler than what it has been, it's still too hot to be working out in the midday sun. So I'll show you guys what we've got and what we've managed to do. These green grapes are probably about 10% of our whole like, grape vines. So I'm just waiting down here and Dan's going to get the, the van, which is going to act like a tractor today, and take these grapes up to the top of the land where we'll do something with them. Is this the Origin homestead? See? I heard I've got to pick up some grapes from the grapevine. Get it? You heard it through the grapevine? Heard it through the grapevine. <laughs> How many have you got? Uh, just a few buckets. Quite the Um, two, three, four, five, six. Great. Get them in the back. We'll get them to the, to the city. <laughs> See? Right, thanks for that darling. Uh, I'll be taking these into the town, the closest town. What I'll do is I'll try and get as much money as I can for them and I'll bring you back half. Okay. <laughs> Sounds like a deal? Yeah. Deal. Sounds very fair. Dan's borrowing my hat for a shot on you. Yeah, so, because everyone in the comments was saying that we need to wear a hat, so we decided today doing the grape harvest that I was going to get me Amish on. So now I look like a proper Amish boy. Don't know why I've got my hands on my hips for, like, but uh, now I'm a proper Amish boy, you know. All I need now is a piece of straw out my mouth. With the grapes now at the top of the land, it was now time to do what we had been most excited about, stomp on the grapes. So I've just washed my feet and now we're going to start stomping on the grapes. <laughs> and I'm really excited about doing this. I think it's going to be so cool. And apparently it's the best way to break them down without breaking the seeds, which if you break the seeds, it can make the 
um, juice very bitter so apparently the human foot's the perfect tool so I'm gonna get a little foot massage today <laughs> it should be nice so here we go oh, it feels weird that how does it feel? it feels quite nice I'm just hoping I don't slip and slide everywhere I'm actually surprised at how much juice is coming out of them just by stomping on them. I know I probably sound a bit inexperienced but I've never really watched anyone do this before and I've never done this myself so everything that I'm experiencing is like totally brand new and, and exciting so yeah it's cool. I quite like it to be honest. I can't wait for me to have a go. <laughs> Maybe you can't with my toes. No, it's getting there, it's getting there. Are we drinking this tonight? <laughs> Nice. Mm, it's very nice. Probably gonna get loads of comments like that's not very hygienic. <laughs> <laughs> My turn next. We'll see. We'll see. Make sure they don't think you're hygienic. <laughs> we'll like it in there. It's delicious, isn't it? It is nice, isn't it? After dancing our hearts out for a few hours, we set up a little processing station to separate the juice from the pulp. Sieving the grapes was a long process and took us a while. In the future we have ideas about how we would improve the process, but it was quite nice to do it simply by hand though. I've just been putting the remaining of the red grape juice in the pan. We've got about nine litres from the red grape so far and we've drank about two litres of that raw because we couldn't wait to boil it and preserve it so we couldn't help ourselves. So what I'm doing now is I've just put that in, the juice in the pan with some honey. We're going to bring that to a boil and then we're going to preserve it properly in jars so hopefully that we'll be able to enjoy grape juice for the months to come which would be really nice.
Yeah, it smells delicious. It looks lovely. I mean, it doesn't look the greatest, but... I think it looks nice, mate. We are allowed to try it See all the sugar? See all the sugar at the top? Yeah, we'll have to sieve. Have to sieve it, but... Yeah, it smells lovely. Time to jar it up. Oh, boy. That's the jars all now full. We learnt a lot about Canon whilst doing this. We put the jars in the boiling water to heat seal them, but we learned that the best jars for sealing and preserving properly are the ones with the rubber ring around the lid. Don't know, we see bartenders breaking up a, a food bag full of ice. A little bit of wood. So after a long day, we're up on the roof and instead of it being an orange juice tonight, it's a grape juice. So it's been a very long day, but it's nice to enjoy the fruits of our labour while watching the sunset. Yeah, beautiful. Mmm, mm. baby. It's like Ribena, it's so nice. I'm blushing that. <laughs> so good. So good. That is from the gods. Mm -hmm. been a very long day today and um, you know we've been a bit unprepared when it comes to kind of making the the grape juice and kind of preparing some of the things that we've made and that's obviously because with, this is obviously our first time you know homesteading and it's something that we're still getting used to we're still learning and everything's just a learning curve mm -hmm. and also as well um, it's we're really grateful for everyone kind of tuning in and watching and watching our journey unfold you know we've got a lot more to go we've got a lot more to learn uh, we're learning a lot about ourselves um, there's a lot of challenges and also there's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes that kind of behind the channel that you don't get to see and over the last few weeks and months we've had a lot going on so we're trying to do our best just to kind of keep moving forward and finding a way to continue this lifestyle and keep moving forward in the way that we want to um, for our family in the future. I think it's also the fact that we're, we're living in a van at the moment and we don't have a lot of storage to really put the things that we we'll make and we've we'll only got a, like a, a gas stove so there's not a lot to really utilise and we've only got little pans so we're just trying to make the most of what we've got and I think obviously this year's we're not really obviously this year's harvest we haven't really been able to utilise things as well as we would have if we'd had all the equipment and stuff but we just thought we'd give it a go with what we had and what could go wrong really so I'm just happy that we've got a little grape juice and yeah. I'm watching this instead. Yeah, nice. So well, we just wanted to both say thank you so much for tuning in and watching our journey so far. And um, we've got loads more to come. We promise you that. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Hello to my little friend. Some grapes are about to get grabbed up.